Okay, so what do we have here? We have a particle whose mass is small m and this particle is performing uniform circular motion along path A, B, C, D. The diameter of the circle is capital A. That means this particle is going to remain constantly at a distance of A from the center of the circle. Now what is going to happen is when this particle reaches over here say after some time it will reach here after some time it will reach here like this this and this let me show you the particles at different timelines over here. So the particle starts its journey from point A at time is equal to 0. Okay, then it reaches over here and it finishes one fourth part of the entire circular distance. So here the time will be capital T by 4. When it reaches over here, time is capital T by 2. When it reaches over here, the time is 3T by 4. And when it reaches again over here, the time taken is capital T, that is the time period. So capital T is the time taken by this object to complete one circumference distance all right now if you look at it from this perspective you consider here a small screen right along this diameter which is in y-axis you consider a screen and you consider a tube light like this which is emitting light in this direction so when this tube light throws light in this direction the shadow or the projection of this particle on the screen is here when this particle reaches over here the shadow reaches over here when the particle reaches over here, the shadow merges. I am going to shift this tube light here. When this particle reaches over here, its shadow reaches over here. When this particle reaches over here, its shadow reaches over here. And when this particle reaches over here, the shadow reaches over here. The particle reaches over here, the shadow merges. Again shifting the tube light in this direction. When this particle reaches over here, the shadow here. And when this particle reaches over here, the shadow again or the projection reaches over here. So what did you notice is when this particle was performing a circular motion, its shadow was moving up and down along the diameter which was in y-axis. So the similar thing can also be noted if I shift the tube light like this, in that circumstance the shadow of this particle on the screen now which is along x-axis, now the screen is shifted here. You always need to make sure that the screen and the tube light must be parallel to one another. So when this particle is here, the shadow is here. When this particle completes some part of the rotation, its shadow is visualized here. When this particle reaches over here, the shadow reaches over here. When the particle reaches over here, the shadow here, particle here, the shadow merges. When the particle comes down, you make sure that you shift the tube light like this. The shadow is here, when this particle reaches over here, the shadow is felt here. Again when the particle reaches over here, shadow here, when the particle reaches here, the shadow merges. So what is being noticed is the following, a particle is performing uniform circular motion, but its shadow is performing simple harmonic motion along either y-axis or x-axis. Now let me tell you why it is a simple harmonic motion, if you look at the shadow along y-axis and that is what going, we are going to look at at this particular moment of time. Right, so assume a tube light here, the shadow of this particle is here, let me show you by a square box, the shadow, of course it is circular just to show you in different notation. When this particle reaches over here, the shadow reaches over here and when the particle reaches over here, the shadow merges with the particle. Okay, now when the shadow reaches again over here, the, sorry, when the particle reaches over here, the shadow again over here, that means the shadow actually went up by maximum distance from the center equal to the radius. Then it had to turn back and come down. So from here the velocity decreases, decreases, decreases and this shadow stops because then and only then it can turn back. Then again velocity increases becomes maximum, again velocity decreases and the shadow has to stop and when the particle moves from here to here, the shadow again goes in the upward direction. So the particle is actually completing one full circular distance that is equal to the circumference, but the shadow is moving along a straight path performing SHM. The same goes along x-axis. All right. Now, you know what is angular frequency omega. Omega is equal to 2 pi by t. 
Now let me throw some highlight on what I am talking over here. This particle takes capital T time to sweep 2 pi angle. Now what it is, let me tell you once again, this particle was here at time is equal to 0, right? So I am just going to arrange this small marker in this direction. Now when this particle reached here with respect to center, it has swept this much amount of angle, correct? So in time small t, it has swept this much amount of angle, let me call this angle as theta. When the particle reaches over here, it sweeps 90 degree angle. When the particle reaches over here, it sweeps 180 degree angle. From time 0 to time t by 2, it sweeps 180 degree angle. Then the particle reaches over here, it sweeps 270 degree angle and when the particle reaches again back over here, it sweeps 360 degree angle. So that means in time t, it sweeps 2 pi radian angle. Now the particle reaches over here at time is equal to small t. So let me draw a displacement vector or the position vector. By the way, let me specify position vector is always taken from the origin and here the center is believed to be the origin of the coordinate system. You believe a coordinate system attached over here, the center behaves as the origin. Now the length is A of the vector. So the position vector is always going to turn, turn, but its magnitude is going to remain constant, right? So at time t, this particle reaches over here time small t, correct? And it has swept an angle theta. So in time capital T, 2 pi is the angle. So in time small t, theta is the angle. So cross multiply. So theta times capital T is equal to 2 pi times small t. So from here theta can be written as 2 pi by capital T times small t. Now what is 2 pi by t? We know 2 pi by t is omega. So theta is equal to omega times t. So now I am going to just remove this theta and I am going to use omega t for our derivation. Now as I said earlier that when you keep the tube light like this one, the shadow of this falls over here. Correct. Now please only look at the shadow which is performing SHM along y axis. We can also look at the shadow along x axis as well but later. Now I am going to call the displacement as y in y direction, alright? Because this particle was here, shadow was here, this particle reached here, shadow reached here. So the displacement from time 0 to time t of the shadow is y, correct? Now just shift the tube light over here, the shadow will be cast over here and you will see that this is the displacement, okay? And the displacement along the x would be this one. The shadow was here and remember the displacement is always taken from the origin or the mean position, right? So along x-axis the shadow was here then the particle reached over here, the shadow reached over here. So basically this is the position vector. So the position vector and the position vector, okay? Now we will only look at the y aspect but I was also trying to show you the x1. Now if you look at this particular triangle, I am going to take sine omega t that is equal to this distance that is y, this distance is y, so this is also y perpendicular upon hypotenuse y upon a. So you can very well see that y is equal to a sin omega t. This is the expression of displacement along which axis? y axis. Now similarly, we can also uh, take with respect to the x axis. Simply I need to find out cos omega t that is equal to x base upon hypotenuse that is equal to x by a. So you can also correlate the expression or the SHM equation of the shadow in x-axis that is x is equal to a cos omega t, correct? Now this x and y are basically the position or the displacement of the shadow which is performing SHM. 
so particle performing uniform circular motion the shadow is performing shm along both the axis we will only restrict ourselves to y axis so this is how we have obtained the expression for the displacement in most of the textbooks you will see something like this y as a function of time that is a sin omega t now why did i write as a function of time because over here a is constant because a is the radius of the circle that is not going to change now this part is purely dependent upon small t because omega is also constant because omega is 2 pi by t t is constant for uniform circular motion 2 pi is constant so y is only dependent upon t correct so that's why in most of the textbooks you will see y is equal to a sin omega t now one very small change i would like to make over here that if this particle was suppose here at time is equal to zero right that means it was already at some angle with respect to x axis i am going to call that angle as phi right so at time is equal to zero we started the particle from here and its shadow was here now just imagine if the particle was here then its shadow would be falling somewhere over here at time is equal to zero now when the particle does not start from the origin at time is equal to t this angle is known as initial phase now what will happen is from time zero to time t the particle travels this distance theta which is omega t so now theta is not this complete angle theta is the angle swept from 0 to t so this is theta which is omega t correct now if you look at the displacement of this particle by the way displacement is always taken from the origin so the still this remains y and if i look at this particular triangle the entire angle is omega t plus phi in this situation what will i have to do is i'll have to take sine omega t plus phi because this whole triangle this whole angle is omega t plus phi in case the particle does not start from here that is equal to again perpendicular upon hypotenuse y by a please understand y is always taken from here okay so with respect to origin this is y so y is equal to a sine omega t plus phi is the new equation and this phi is usually zero if the particle starts from the origin where its shadow starts from the origin if the particle guess guess the value what would happen if this particle would have been here if this particle would have been here at time is equal to zero already the angle is 90 degree and then suppose sorry and suppose in time t then it travels this much of the angle theta which is omega t then with respect to the origin it was already at 90 degrees so now you will have to consider phi this angle phi as 90 degree and go ahead if this particle at time is equal to zero would have been here then phi with respect to this point would be the entire angle swept that is 180 degree or you can simply write down pi here if had, had been the particle over here the value of phi would have been pi by 2 in the same way if this particle starts its journey from here say at time is equal to 0 the angle swept would have been phi is equal to 3 pi by 2 that is 270 degree and the particle again over here the phi is either 2 pi or you may start from zero as well if time is equal to zero and the particle is already covered one full revolution then it is two pi